Welcome to the fourth lesson in our series, Waves in the Real World. In the previous lessons after this series, we investigated the diffraction and interference of wave fronts as waves pass different types of boundaries. Until now, the vibrating source of all the waves we have studied has been stationary, but the source can also be moving. When a vibrating source moves, the result is a most unusual phenomenon. The frequency of the waves appears to change and seems to increase or decrease depending on whether the source is moving towards or away from the observer. We call this observed change in frequency the Doppler effect. In this lesson, we will see how the Doppler effect can be applied to water waves, sound waves and light. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the Doppler effect, explain how the Doppler effect applies to sound, and calculate the change in the pitch of sound for a moving source or observer. Let's go straight to the lab to see some practical demonstrations of the Doppler effect. Hi there, have a look at my ripple tank again. Here I have a single vibrating source that is making circular waves that spread out like ripples. Notice that the waves are evenly spaced around the source. This means the waves are moving outward with the same speed and wavelength. Now watch what happens when the source is moved from left to right. The frequency of the moving source does not change. Notice the wave pattern changes. The wave fronts in front of the moving source are closer together and in the region behind the source the wave fronts are further apart. What can you conclude about the frequencies of the waves in front of and behind the source from what you've observed? To help you reach the right conclusion, recall the relationships between speed of the wave, frequency and wavelength. In the ripple tank, the speed of the water waves remains constant as there is no change in the medium or in the depth of the water. So the observed changes in wavelength in front of and behind the moving object must mean that the frequencies of the wave have changed too. Where the wavelength of the water waves in front of the moving source decreased, the frequency increased. And where the wavelength increased behind the source, the frequency here decreased. That was quite an interesting effect. Now let's see if the same thing applies to sound waves. Here I have a Doppler rocket. This source emits a sound which has a particular pitch. This pitch is fixed and does not change. Remember, pitch and frequency are related. So the frequency of the sound emitted by the source is fixed and does not change. Now watch and listen to what happens to the pitch of the sound as the rocket moves towards you. Did you notice that the pitch increased? Now remember, the source did not change its frequency, it just moved towards you. Now what do you predict will happen if the rocket moves away from you? Well this time the pitch decreased. You may have noticed a similar phenomenon when an ambulance or police vehicle moves towards you and then past you. Did you notice that the pitch of the sound was higher before it reached us and then became lower after it passed us? 
do you see the similarity between what happened to the wave frequency as the source moved in all three cases we've examined here? In all cases, the frequency increased ahead of the moving source and decreased behind it. We saw this in the change in spacing of the water waves and heard it in the change in pitch in the case of the sound waves. Let's go back to studio to explain the changes we've observed. Okay, let's start by looking at the water waves experiment again. Let's say that the frequency of the source is set at 2 Hz. This means that two ripples spread outward from the source each second. First, let's consider what happens when the source stays in its position and does not move. Imagine that there is an observer in front of the source at point 1 and one behind the source at point 2. The observer at point 1 would observe exactly the same frequency for the ripples as the observer at point 2. Both of them would see two ripples passing them each second. Now, let's see what happens when the source is moved to the left towards point 1. Notice how the movement causes the ripples to make a different pattern in the water. The ripples moving from the source to point 1 have a short distance to travel and so arrive at point 1 sooner. The observer at point 1 would now see more ripples passing her each second. In other words, for the observer at point 1, the ripples will arrive with a frequency that is greater than 2 Hz. But the source has moved away from the observer at point 2. So each ripple has to travel a longer distance to reach this point, and so the observer at point 2 will count fewer ripples passing him in one second. In other words, for the observer at point 2, the ripples will arrive with a frequency that is less than 2 Hz. However, we know that the frequency of the source has not changed while moving and is still 2 Hz. The observed change in the frequency is called the Doppler effect. As you have seen, the Doppler effect also doesn't only apply to water waves, it applies to all other types of waves as well. Can you explain why the pitch of the siren changed as the police car moved towards and away from us? Let's apply what we have learned about the Doppler effect. When a police car is driving towards us with its siren blaring, we hear sound that has a higher pitch than the actual sound of the siren. Remember, with sound, that pitch and frequency are related. So as the car approaches and the frequency of the sound waves increases, we hear the siren as a higher pitch than it actually is. And when a police car is driving away from us with its siren blaring, we hear sound that has a lower pitch than the actual sound of the siren. Because the frequency that the observer notices is always lower when the source of waves is moving away from the observer. The Doppler effect has therefore helped us to understand why we hear this change in the sound as the police car drives past us. You should note that the frequency that the observer notices will also change if the observer is moving. Now, there is a way that we can calculate the change in the frequency that is caused when either the source or the observer is moving. Let's use the example of Tabo walking down the road with his music playing. He is the source, S, of the sound waves. His friend Kristen is walking down the road behind him. Kristen is the observer, O. We will need to introduce a few variables and the symbols we use for them. We will use Vs for the velocity of the source of the waves and Vo for the velocity of the observer. We will use the variable Fs for the frequency of the sound waves as they leave the source and Fo for the frequency of the sound waves that the observer hears. We will use the symbol V for the speed of the sound waves.
We can then calculate the frequency of the sound that the observer hears using this equation. FO equals V plus VO over V plus VS times FS. Let's do a calculation together using our example of Tabo and Kristen. Tabo is walking down the road with a velocity of 5 meters per second. Kristen is walking slowly behind him with a velocity of 1 meter per second. We know that the speed of sound is 340 meters per second. If a sound coming from Tabo's mini hi-fi has a frequency of 440 hertz, can you use the equation to find the frequency that Kristen will hear for the same note? Let's look at this together. The information that we are given is that Tabo's velocity is 5 meters per second. This tells us the velocity of the source, Vs. We are also given that Kristen's velocity is 1 meter per second. This tells us the velocity of the observer, VO. The speed of sound, V, is 340 meters per second and the frequency of the sound as it leaves the source, Fs, is 440 hertz. What we want to calculate is FO, the frequency of the sound as it reaches the observer. If we substitute these values into the equation, we can solve for the frequency FO, and we find that it has dropped to 435 hertz. You might wonder how this equation will change if the source is moving towards the observer instead of away. In fact, the equation itself will not change. All that will change is that the velocity of the source will become negative. In the same way as for any calculation involving velocity, it is important to work out our frame of reference at the beginning of the problem and then use it to tell us whether the velocities that we need are positive or negative. There is one special rule that we must keep in mind when finding our frame of reference for Doppler problems. The positive direction must always be the direction from the observer to the source. Let's look at a few examples to see how to apply this sign convention. Tabo walks to the left with a velocity of 5 meters per second and Kristen walks to the right towards Tabo with a velocity of 1 meter per second. Let's choose the frame of reference so that velocity toward the right is positive. We have made this choice because the line between the observer and source must always be positive. This means that any velocity toward the left is negative. We now write down the velocities of Tabo, the source, and Kristen, the observer, as Vs equals negative 5 meters per second because Tabo moves to the left and Vo equals positive 1 because Kristen moves to the right. If we substitute these values into our equation, we will find the correct value for the observed frequency. See if you can find this frequency using the equation. Let's take a look. If we substitute these values into our equation, this time we find that the frequency FO has increased to 448 hertz. Now, what if Tabo is walking to the left with a velocity of 5 meters per second and Kristen is also walking to the left but with a velocity of 1 meter per second in front of Tabo? Notice the line from the observer to the source is still to the right. This means that all velocities to the right are positive and all velocities to the left are negative. So Vs and Vo are both negative. If we substitute these values into our equation, we can solve for the observed frequency.
see if you can find this frequency using the equation. Right, let's have a look at the equation. If we substitute these values into our equation, this time we find that the frequency FO has still increased but is now 445 Hz instead of 448 Hz. In these examples, we have calculated the observed frequency for different situations. I would like you to use the same equation to solve today's task. A train is driving along the tracks with a velocity of 20 meters per second. The train is blowing its horn, which has a frequency of 300 hertz. A car is driving along a road that is next to the railway track with a speed of 30 meters per second in the opposite direction to the train. Calculate the frequency of the note that the driver of the car would hear before she has passed the train and then after she has passed the train. Use your answers to explain the change in sound that she would hear. Remember that the speed of sound waves in air is 340 meters per second. One hint that you might need when solving this problem is that your frame of reference is going to have to change halfway through the problem since the direction from the car to the train will change as they pass each other. Thank you for joining me today. In our next lesson, you will discover some of the useful ways in which the Doppler effect is applied in our society.